Welcome to the Belfry Hockey Podcast. My name is Daryl Belfry, and we're going to continue on now with our series here in the teaching realm. And we're going to continue with Season 3, and this is going to be Episode 5. And what I want to focus on on this one is the personal training or practice habits. Uh, we hear a lot that some players have like elite training habits or elite practice habits, but we don't really hear what those specifics are. So I want to dig into what I think are some of the main tenets of someone who has elite practice and training habits and someone who's like getting something out of practice and has a, a real purpose and is able to leverage their time and not just, you know, showing up to practice. Um, these are people that are able to get something meaningful out of the time in which they're training and practicing. So uh, my advice on trying to become a, a much better practice and training uh, student is to take a habit um, every week and try to incorporate it into your regular regular routine which I think is, is, is the best way to do it. I think sometimes, like I'm going to go through, I don't know, I have a list of about 30 different things that I'm going to talk about. So obviously that can get very daunting, like, oh my God, like I don't do any of that. And then you try to do well, them all and you're just going to get frustrated. It's better just to just to say, okay, like I, let's take one of these and try to incorporate it into what I'm doing. Once I feel comfortable that that's in, then I'm going to add another one and add another one and you will be surprised at how much you're able to pick up over uh, over a short period of time and become a really strong player in the way in which you train. So I'm going to start off with uh, the most important aspect of training habits, and that's your attitude. You know, the players that love the game and they can't wait to get to the rink, they can't wait to get there, they're there miles in in advance of when the time is that the practice is going to start. They're taping their sticks. They love being in the in the change room. They're talking to their teammates. They're talking to their coaches. They have a great uh, great attitude. They're excited to be there. That bring good energy. I think that those players are people that have a great start in the way in which that that they're practiced they're very serious about what they're doing but they have fun when they're when, while they're doing it and you can tell that there's a real genuineness in the way in which they love it so i think it's hard to be a great um have great practice habits if you don't love the game you have to love it and i i think that that's a, a real prerequisite that can be precluding for a lot of players who they like hockey uh, but they don't love it. I think that sometimes then these, the, especially when you're in a team and in, you're in a league where they practice every day, then you can really see the players that really embrace that and they love that. And um, I think that that's where, you, that's where it, really, it really stands out. Uh, at least for me, when I see those environments, you can really tell the kids that are uh, that they truly, truly love it. So that's the first thing I think you gotta learn to you gotta learn to love it. It's like the gym. Well, you know, if you want to be a great hockey player, you have to love being in the gym. I mean that it, it's it's hard. It's getting harder and harder and harder every year that goes by to be a player uh, at an elite level and not have put the time in in the gym and so learning to love that which sometimes it is a process of learning to figure out the things that you find personal enjoyment in some people it's the social part of it some people it's like it's all the other it's like the the environment it's the it's the smell of the rank it's the it's the sound of the puck hitting the boards or it's the sound of the puck hitting the hitting the the crossbar it's the it's the the feel of the rink. It's the 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 feel of your skates on the ice. The feel of the puck. Um, the feeling the puck getting snapped around. It's whatever it is. Like it's just that whole like environment that they that they that they love. And then for others, it's like it's the challenge of like trying to trying to learn something new or the trying to find something that's really exciting in that day's practice and, and work on it. And, and it's the work, the work ethic and 
the actual like training part of it, that that's the part that, that they're drawn to. And I think for every player, it's different. And every player has got to find their own way of what it is that draws them to it and what they, what they love. But I think it's very difficult to have elite practice habits if you don't love some part of the game in, in a way that allows you to leverage that love into, into the stewardship of becoming really good in, in the mundane. And that's the problem with practice habits is you're often doing similar things over and over and over again. And there's like the repetitiveness of it and finding the enjoyment in the repetitiveness of it or figuring out how to take the repetitiveness and kind of bend them, bend the repetitiveness a little bit to make it so that it's a little more interesting. So whatever the approach is, there's lots of different ways in which players can become more effective at that. But um, I think those couple things I think are, are really important to start with. So first finding the love in it. I think that that's, that's for sure. Number one Number two, I think is having an approach like you you go to the training session you go to practice and you have certain habits and and uh, some players even have like certain rituals like you'll hear you know they get to the rink at a certain time and then they have a certain warm-up that they do that they that they feel gets them you know mentally ready to go and they physically get themselves prepared they get properly warmed up they might handle the puck they might make sure that they're the first person on the ice like that could be part of their routine and then when they go on and they're first that they have certain things that they that they're doing it might just be like a couple of easy laps and they're like taking in the atmosphere of what's going on or that you know there's or they there's certain they can't wait to get on because they're going to you know work on a specific part of their game and they, they they feel like they're getting ahead on certain reps or whatever that case whatever that case may be or they have you know a certain player that they that they engage with and you know they have certain you know different funny things that they do together that makes it more enjoyable like the, whatever it is that's those are things there's a certain habit or a routine that comes from practice habits the, the thing with practice habits is is like it's about the consistency of it. That's what's really important. It's it's the consistency of it and then often and that's why I mean like you gotta love it because you gotta find those things that you really enjoy doing every time you go. And I think that that's figuring out what that is for, for you is is the start of that process. And it, and that can evolve. It it can start at one as one thing and then it kind of shifts and and moves and moves to the other. Now, the next part of it, I think, is is where we get into, like, the actual, like, when you're on the ice habits. And that's, you know, I think when the drills are going, trying to be first. I, I just, the I, when I was young, as a young coach and a young instructor, I used to, you know, try to figure out this going first thing. And I would find that there were certain kids that would go first and... They would go first for a reason and it really worked out for them. Then there were other kids that would kind of like happen to go first and they shouldn't really have gone first or what. I, and they kind of find themselves in the, in, in the situation where they're first and then, you know, it, it doesn't work out as well. But there, there are the kids that are go first a lot. That's a mentality and it's an important mentality to have that they're, they're not just ready to go, but they're 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 paying attention. There's a pressure to try to seek to understand what the coach is trying to do. Um, ask questions. You're, you're prompted for sure. You're gonna have to ask questions because you're going first. So there's a there's a responsibility that comes with going first that has a real development value because you really have to engage mentally. And I love that part. And when you play for a coach that doesn't run the same drills over and over again, where there's he has like different things that they're doing, then it, the pressure to really understand drills and go and get first in line. And I think that that's there's a there's a real mental benefit to that that I don't think can be understated. And if it's done properly, it can really be. Uh, a really a, a great kickstart 
um, to get the practice juices going and, uh, and start getting the engagement. Because one of the biggest challenges with practice is because it's so, uh, it gets to be pretty like repetitive and the same types of things are coming up over and over again, it tends to shut off the mind and players just get into like autopilot and then there's a lack of engagement when there's a lack of mental engagement then the there's players likelihood of getting a, a meaningful takeaway gets to be much less and so you could argue sometimes like it's it's hardly sometimes the way some players go through practice like they're almost better off not practicing just because they're mentally just not even really there for a high enough percentage of time to get the real value out of out of practice and so that's why i think going first learning to go first because there are some kids like there's some kids that are anxious there's some kids who are self-conscious there are some kids that have these like real sensitivities to the way in which you know they are in in the in front of their peers and you know their reaction to failure and you know they don't want to be embarrassed and they don't want to be yelled at for doing it wrong and you know they have a hard time processing verbally what the coach is saying or the player coach draws it on the board goes okay you go here you go there you go there you go there then this happens and that happens okay ready go and the player's like, oh my God, I have no idea what you're even talking about. Like learning how, I think that's a process of putting yourself in a spot where you take some responsibility early on and you try to figure out how the coach likes to operate. You know, you start paying attention to the things that they like to do, the way they like to set up drills, the way they like to, because everyone has, everyone has like habits and everyone has like favorite ways of doing things. They have favorite drills. And so learning all of those things can make it a lot easier. And uh, especially if you are a kid who is a little bit anxious and a little bit self-conscious and all of those things, then it's almost even more important to, uh, to put yourself in some of those situations as a way of like using the, the, using the practice and your practice preparation, your practice habits to help overcome um, or at least not even overcome, but at least like win the day on some of those uh, things that maybe hold you back at different times. And I, I, I know a lot of kids that really struggle with, um, with anxiety and things like that, that have, uh, I've really tried to encourage them to be, go first more and do some of those things because that's what's going to really make a, make a big difference. The other aspect of it aside from just being you know the the social anxiety or whatever else like that is sometimes plaguing is just the idea of just having that be like some like a mental uh, shift that you're really going to focus on paying attention you're listening to what's happening I think that can be a great kickstart to to your to the actual practice so going first I think that there's a lot of value in going first and um, and if it's not every time that it's enough that you're able to get the benefits out of it, which I think are significant. Uh, the next part of think I think that's important is like finishing routes. I think the finishing routes, there's, there's multiple parts of this that I think are really important to, to dig into. So the first part about finishing routes is whatever the play is, it has like a beginning and it has an ending and that you you finish that the actual route the way that it's intended but what I always like to do too is have the player focus on whatever the next play might be as well so if let's say let's say it's like a continuous continuous two-on-two -two drill for example and you know plays going from one end to the other and you're a defenseman and you get the uh, you know you get the puck you, first, you accept the rush, uh, you make whatever play, and then your job is now to start the next play. So what I always like to do is, like, because you're it's continuous and you like to start, the, and you're starting the next play, oftentimes a player will just make the pass, and then they'll just stand up, and then just kind of casually just glide to the back line. I always like to see the player that, like, gets the puck, 
they make up they make that outlet pass and then they take like a couple hard strides towards the blue line as though they were going to be joining the rush and then they fall into the line like that's what i mean about finishing it's like no one wants no coach wants you to make a pass and then that's it they always like to see you like make a pass and then like move to the next spot so incorporating that as your in part of your personal practice habits is is really good it's, just, it's the same as a forward who has to finish his route and land at the net you know you don't hear too many coaches are like okay shoot and turn away right every coach is like shoot follow your shot to the net land at the net and then from there then then move to the next spot whatever whatever that might be but that's a that's finishing a route you know and i i think when I started to talk about finishing routes and I started to incorporate making sure that I was demanding that players finish routes on my ice, what I found was I had less players turning away from the net. So the more I was, I was talking about finishing a route, and I talked about where the finishing of the routes and how important that was and where those routes were supposed to finish, I had less of that shot and peel away from the net. So I was, I was talking less about, hey, stop turning away. So it became less of a negative of stop turning away from the net and or, hey, you've got to stop at the net. Make sure you stop at the net. It became less about that and more about finishing the route. When you talk about finishing the routes, well, that's every drill. It doesn't have to be at the net. It could be anywhere uh, that you're finishing the route, and finishing the route is the next play, and I think that that's really important. The mindset of next, incorporating that, that's what finishing the route is. So it doesn't matter what the drill is or where you're supposed to go that you finish it and the way in which you finish it is that you start whatever the next thing might be. So if it was, you know, your job in the drill could be just four check pressure. So you go in, you got good habits, you got a good stick, you got a good angle, you, you four check, you pressure. And then rather than just pressure, the guy moves the puck and then you just slide to the back line, you pressure, you got a good stick. You got all of those details, but then you sprint back through the middle of the ice as though now you're tracking and then you're going to go into the first stages of what the back check would be. Then you slide to the back line. That's what finishing the route is. And I think that as a coach, you know, there's a responsibility for every player to have good personal practice habits. They don't always know what it is, and I think that that's a continuous uh, and a continual education process with every player. I, I genuinely do. I think that's part of the coach's responsibility at practice is to build good practice habits. Um, and so, uh, yes, the player needs to bring a good attitude. Yes, the player needs to have a love for it. And partly that's your responsibility, particularly when they're young, is to foster a love for coming to practice, which is why we've gone to trying to make find different ways to get more players engaged, play more games, have more fun as a way of building a love for coming to, to practice. Because if you have so many practices where you come and there's you know one kid moving, 15 kids are standing in a line, everyone's bored, they're frustrated, well now you're not really building a love for the practice, you're you're making that to be something that they don't want to do. Then they're like, like I just want to play the games. So now we're kind of said, okay, you just want to play games. How can I figure out how to play the games more? So we come up with all these different games. That's fine too. It's just whatever it takes to get a player hooked on wanting to come back to the rink and love it. That's partly your responsibility as a coach. So fair enough. So now we've got that moving and at the young ages, that's what our responsibility is. But then as they get older, now it's their kind of, they have to meet you halfway with this love, with good, with a good, uh, good habits of getting to the rink on time and having a way to prepare themselves. They try to go first. They're paying attention to what's going on. All the kind of prerequisites of just being a good citizen. Um, but now we're getting into now they've met you halfway. You have a really good kid who wants to be there, who has good 
initial habits, but now the actual practice habits, that's on you now as a coach to really try to foster that. So that's where finishing routes and teaching how to finish a route and what that looks like, I think we have a lot of room for, uh, for growth there uh, in the way in which we operate in practice about how we structure the drills and and I've done a lot of research in my own way of trying to figure out how to make the practices better, more interesting, have greater development value, and this finishing routes is is a good one. Now, let's say you're a player listening to this and you're you're just trying trying to figure out how to have better practice habits. So what we're talking about about finishing the route and connecting what the next play might be and thinking next so you're you watch the drill as it gets drawn out or as you have done it once or twice now like the third time you're going you say okay like how can I finish this route better with where could I go so it's a I'm the four checker so right away I'm going to connect the four check I'm going to connect that to a track re a reload track and into a back check and then I'm going to fall out of the line. Okay, so that's how I'm going to finish that row. Oh, it's a shooting drill? Perfect. I'm landing at the net. I'm going to stop at the net, play out any rebounds that might be there. That's how I'm going to finish that row. Oh, I'm a D. My job is to break out. I'm just, I'm, my job is to, you know, retrieval, break out. I'm going to throw a little deception in there. I'm going to make that pass and then I'm three hard strides up the dot line as I look like I'm going to join the rush or I'm closing off the next, the space to get to the next play. Um, and the next play is, you know, to join the rush off the breakout. You know, it's any drill, any drill has a, has a purpose and it has a, as something that would happen next. It just so happens that the way the drill is designed, it cuts off at that particular time to get the rep. So we're doing a drill. It's a breakout drill. We're going to do all these different breakouts. Um, but the drill stops after the breakout. It, it starts a new breakout. It goes breakout, breakout, breakout. It doesn't go breakout, rush, rush entry. So your job is to add that next part of it. And you just you can do that without being disruptive at all. You just do it on your own. I think that that's a, a really Im- important piece. So same as passing. One of that one of it's passing in practice has a similar thing as shooting in practice. Oftentimes our shooting habits in practice are so bad that it's no wonder that we have a trouble scoring. We don't we shoot we don't have good routes, we take unrealistic routes, we shoot with no pressure, we shoot while we're slowing down or stopping, we you have all these bad habits. We miss the net a lot. We shoot over the net. Uh, we do all the things that are kind of unrealistic and unproductive. And then we get to a game wonder why we can't score. Because pr- the shooting habits are just so poor. And so as a coach and as a player, you can start thinking about building better habits. And just talking about shooting, there's so many things shooting finishing the route we just talked about finding the next play playing route playing out rebounds fig, like working on your spacing between you and the net when you do land at the net w- working on flash screens after taking better shot routes so figuring out the routes of where they're going we're going down we're going diagonal we're going across we're going down and then up like there's all these different routes that we could be taking um but what happens is we get into a shooter drill for the goalie at the beginning of the practice it's like a little timing drill tick tick pass pass get the puck uh stretch pass to me i get it down the middle of the ice i take two steps and then snap a puck from the top of the circle in the middle of the top of the circle like when how many times that happened rather than tick tick pass move I get to the far blue line. I'm cutting across. I get the stretch pass from the other side because it's this timing drill to get the goalie warmed up, get me warmed up. Now, instead of you know grabbing that puck and casually just taking it to the middle of the ice, I get it. I get it in the middle of the ice. I get the entry. I go down the dot line. 
you know, I'm going, I go down, I make like a little in, short little inside cut and then shoot the puck at the top of the circle. So coach said, shoot it at the top of the circle. We're trying to get distant shots for the goalie. The goalie coach is all over us about making sure that the goalies get properly warmed up. Fair enough. There's still ways in which you can finish those routes and finish and do meaningful reps about what it is that you're working on. Focus on hitting the net, focus on hitting the net from distance. Uh, lower so you're not shooting high and high and hard all the time you know shooting proper shots you don't come in and just shoot slap shots of course you come in there's like little change of angle little stop up varying the types of shots that you're shooting all those are all good good shooting habits um, that we don't always focus on you watch some teams practice you're like I don't know how they score a single goal the way that they practice shooting alone same can be said about passing passing habits when you watch practices sometimes the passing is just so poor first they're not on but then they're the same they pass way too hard all the time snap puck around bang 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 every pass is just a rocket and it looks good and it goes up and down the but it's not practical that's not how the game is played if you're snapping the puck as hard as you possibly can every time snapping it to to the next guy like now try to shoot off the pass like that. Like that's not possible. So it's like having the right pass with the right weight on it for the right situation. So sometimes you're going to pass it hard. Sometimes you might use the boards to get the puck there. Even though the drill didn't call for it, you use the boards to get the puck there. Sometimes it might be a little area pass where you, you know, you move, you get the dot line, they got the guy on the outside, you get the dot line, then you slide it in space like as though you're putting it between two players to lead the player into the space and to shoot. Uh, it might be like a little saucer pass that um, that you know you're you're simulating. You're gonna use a saucer pass to go over the line. Um, like those types of things, you're gonna add different aspects to the passing to make it work. Um, to make it so that the passing is more reasonable, that you're not just, oh, the guy is trying to get a shot off the pass and you just throw it anywhere. No, you know he's trying to get a shot off the pass, so put it in a place where he can shoot it off the pass. Like, be become better at recognizing where the pass is. One of my real pet peeves about passing in general, but passing in practice, they pass to the wrong side. The guy's a right-handed shot, he wants the puck in front of him on his stick and the pass goes behind him then the same same play next rep the guy is a left-handed shot he actually wants the puck towards his skates and now we're passing it in front of him he's got to catch it now on his backhand so it's recognizing the handedness of the guy you're trying to pass it to and the situation and match those two pay attention to it and give the right pass for the right situation i mean that alone is awesome in terms of utilizing good practice habits. So pra shooting habits, practice habits. The other one is competitive habits. So we all want competitive kids until they get to practice. Then we use dummy defenders and they're not competing at all. Or we only put them in situations that are competitive when it's a game, but the actual like some of the practice stuff is not is not really all that competitive. So you got a really competitive kid who doesn't get a chance to practice being competitive. So one of the things I like to talk about is, particularly with, um, it doesn't matter if defender or, or forward, but I love it with defenders to say, every time you're in a defensive situation, end up with the puck. End up with the puck and start the next play. Even though it's the drill might be over after that, it might be just a two-on-two -two in the corner, you end up with the puck, and then step out and snap, like step out of that pile after you've won the puck, and then make the pass to the line, even though that has no bearing on the next play. But that's just good practice habits. You know, get the puck, win the puck, and then get moving into the next play. That next play would be a breakout or whatever the whatever the next play might be. Focus on the next. So end up with the puck. You know, I like it when I see there's like a one on one. And then you see that the fenders like still like trying to strip the forward. The forward maybe took a shot, and then now the puck goes in the corner. And you see the forward, the D go in there and like strip the strip the forward with the puck. I love seeing that. I think that's 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 really uh, that's kid being competitive. I love that. Same as the forward, end up with the puck. 
go in, end up with the puck. So where that becomes important, and this is dovetails to my whole idea of surrounding shooting habits, track your shot. So shots taken, you take the shot, you follow that tracking of the puck so that you you end up with that puck. You go and make it your business to track down that rebound, pick it up, even if it has no bearing on the next rep. So it might not be a continuous drill or a continuous sequence, but that you end up with it. And I, I think that that's where some of these things in practice, in in the building of practice habits, and this is what you don't, when you don't do anything that has any repetitive value to it, you leave a lot of these details off the table. And that's why I was talking about before about kids and when we just we we just play games, you miss out on a lot of these types of aspects uh, because there's not enough uh, repetitions in a row to build these types of habits. So yes, they're competitive in the game, and yes, they have good. You can build good shooting habits when they're playing a game. You can build good practice habits. You can build good competitive habits. Of course, you can do all that. <coughs> Excuse me, but what I'm saying is, it's the pra- it's also in sometimes in the repetitive drills where you're trying to get a lot of reps in in a short period of time. These are great, uh, also great structures to build really good and really fine uh, practice habits and and as it relates to passing, shooting, tra- and tra- checking or being competitive. So. Those are good things to come to come up with. Um, the other thing that's really important that I I think is is a is is really I think one of the one of the, maybe one of the more important things is I like players who are courageous with their passing. Courageous meaning that they try different things. Like you'll see, coach sometimes you'll do a drill where. Uh, the player has to use like a bank pass like they have to use the boards to get the puck like that's the play uh, in the drill and then the next drill happens and you never see that play happen again and the next drill happens player never uses the boards then they start you know doing the same I like it when player like they have a multiplicity of of pra- of pra- passing skills that they try to u- utilize during the course of the practice and and that they're doing some of that stuff on their own. That's what I mean about courageous passes because sometimes it's a little out of the out of the ordinary. Players on a uh, you know, players on a breakout play, no pressure, and the D-man instead of snapping it tape to tape, the D-man goes off the boards to bank it off the boards to then bank it so it lands on the winger's stick. Like it does that on their own. That's good practice habits and it's courageous because it might not work. But that's where you're taking a risk good practice habits are you're putting a little pressure on yourself to make that play even because it's a little bit unconventional if it misses you know it's like a saucer pass you make that pass and it bounces that poor guy that you were supposed to give the puck to who's just going to go in and take a shot you're now not getting a shot because your pass bounced over his stick probably not gonna be all that happy so that puts pressure on you So that's why you should try to find a way to be courageous in practice with your passing. So that's that's another one. Uh, The other thing is catching passes, catching them clean and taking great pride in wherever the pass comes, I'm going to handle it. Um, And I, I think that a lot of players in their passing habits, they don't take a lot of pride or enough pride in the catches. There should be no bad pass to you. You should be able to handle literally everything and try different things. Maybe the hooks, you know, lay the stick down. It's way ahead of you. You go down on one knee, you flatten the stick out, and you hook catch. That could be something that you add into the mix. Taking pucks out of your feet. A pass comes to, towards your feet. You handle it with your feet. I think that that's really, really important. And as a coach, like I said, you can, you can foster this because you can talk to players about, hey, that was a good one. You should have handled that in your feet. Or the player does handle feet. Man, I love when you do that. That was sick. Like, great job. Like, should be no bad pass to you. You can handle anything. That inspires the player to want to be better passer. You say, hey, I would skate by. Hey, I didn't think you missed a pass today. Like, every puck that's come near you, you caught. Oh, no, I missed one. Oh, I didn't see that one. You're creating that engagement, the mental engagement of, like, 
yeah, maybe I could go the next practice, next the next practice, and just try not to miss a pass that was intended to me. If it's anywhere in my my sphere of influence, I'm going to handle it. And I think that that you can you can challenge players to build that as part of their practice habits, and as a, and then as a player, you can do that with each other. You can talk to you know each other. It's no different than one of the favorite things that I also like that kids do is they do shooting games in the practice with teammates. So all of a sudden they have like a side game going on where they're counting the number of goals that they score. And you'll see them in the back, in the lines. They'll be like, hey, I'm, I'm up 4-1 or whatever. And then they score, the next guy scores again. And then they're like arguing goals of with, whether it went in or not or whether it counted because goalie wasn't ready. Whatever, like they, you start to see that competitive spirit come out when they're having like this side game that no one else is playing except for these two kids but they're doing it during the core course of the practice I love seeing that I, I love seeing that because now how much more purposeful are the shots this guy's shooting to score every time because he's in this game so I think you can do that with passing as well hey I'm not gonna miss a pass or I'm not I'm not gonna I'm gonna be courageous with my passing and still make every pass like you start putting pressure on yourself like that's a great way um those are great ideas of being able to build practice habits and then the, the other one is i'm gonna end i'm a defenseman i'm ending up with every puck it doesn't matter what the drill is at the end of the rep it's on my stick i am winning this puck that's another really good habit to to get into and it adds layers of of engagement it adds layers of skill uh players focus they get more competitive there's just a lot of benefits to it and you can foster that as part of your uh your practice culture and you know i hear you hear about culture and i get down on people that talk to me about the their culture of their team because i i can see so much when i just come watch a practice i can see a lot of whether you have good culture or not by just watching your team practice i want to see the way in which they interact, the kids interact with each other. I want to see their practice habits of the kids. Um, and I'll know what what level of detail we're really talking about here. And then I'll also see in, through the player's interaction what level of culture we really have. And so sometimes I don't, I don't want you to tell me what your culture is. I'll just, I'll just come up to one of your, just send me when the practice is. I'll come watch that. I'll know right away. You won't have to tell me. I'll be able to tell you what it is and what it's not and i think that that's really uh, an important thing and some of these things about the way they practice the way they the shooting habits the the routes that they take finishing the routes next play mentality passing uh pa the, the way in which they approach passing the way in which they approach the the competitive aspects of it the desire to end up with the puck on the stick the finishing rebounds at the net all those things are all those are all details that that's that's coming from somewhere and it becomes and, and when you start to see it culturally where you don't just see one kid doing it or two kids doing it you see all the kids have different parts of this that you can see as evident well then now you know it's coming from the leadership of the team and that's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for the other one is moving to pass this is another real pet peeve of mine there's so many like static drills where the first pass is made with the guy standing still or he's standing still to make a pass which you know rarely happens in a game we want people moving um we want people moving we want people moving to get pucks we want to get you know into space and we want to you know play with great hockey sense we want to do all that but then when we design the drills we got people standing still passing pucks it makes no sense so I try to get rid of all that. And if I have a static start, I encourage the puck carrier, before it's your turn, get moving. Get up, make a little turn, get up, pivot, then make a pass, and that's how you're going get, to uh, get involved. You know? Or the guy is supposed to pass to you, you're standing in line. Okay, move to a spot. Get the pass off the catch in motion and then make the next pass and then you turn grab another pass from the guy in line and then off you go as uh as it's your turn to get to get engaged those habits are critical i just hate seeing guys standing still in a line 
it's so irritating because, like I said, it's so counterintuitive to what else you're saying. As a coach, you don't want any of that. You don't want any of that, but then when we practice, that's all we see. We got to go watch 10 drills. I'm going to see six of them where someone is standing still. Then I'm going to watch a game. You're going to have some kid standing in a corner in the game. He's standing, literally standing there, and he's like the designated passer. So at some point, it's like a two-on-two with this guy standing in the corner, and now you give him a puck, and his job is to stand still and pass pucks. Like That's not what we want. That's not what I want. That's for sure. So how do we get that guy? I, I remember running this drill. I saw it. It was a game. And I loved it. I ended up doing it for many years. Basically, the drill was that it was a two-on-two -two in the neutral zone. And the red team, they had an extra guy who was on the blue line. But he could go all the way up and down the blue line. And then the guy on the blue team, he was on the other blue line. He could also go up and down the blue line on his side. So basically, it was a two-on-two -two that became a three-on-two because the guy on the outside was active. And then it started off like he was the only, that, that guy, once he started there, he was the only one who could stay there. Then I got smart and I was like, no, you can rotate. The, we need a guy on the blue line, but it doesn't have to be the same guy. You can rotate that guy in and out. So now it was like it became this whole like power play three on two kind of in zone like half wall kind of a thing with guys with guys moving and inter, uh, interchanging of position. That's more what I like when we when when I'm doing it. I want to have that. I don't want to have someone whose sole job is just to stand in a corner. We don't like that to me is counterintuitive, and uh, so I stay away from I stay away from all of that. Um, but that was one drill that I would do. Now I don't do it that way because I like the net where it's supposed to be. So I used to do it in the neutral zone with the nets would be in the neutral zone. Now I don't bother with that because I don't, I don't like that. Although it's still a good game. You can use it, um, with anybody. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I used it for probably 15 years. Now I do a similar thing, but it's using the dot line and the players going up and down the dot line or they're going down the up and down the half wall, and it's the same similar idea, but uh, similar but not the same, but same idea where the player is moving. There's interaction. They have to have a guy on the outside. That's one of the constraints. But he's in motion all the time. Anyways, I digress. Um, one of the other aspects of things that I like is adding layers to skill. I like to see players. We talked about it last in the last. Uh, in the last podcast where like you have a defenseman who it's his, his his job is to break the puck out so you see him come around the net and then he just you know passes to the winger but he never makes any you know he's not even looking to the middle of the ice he's got he's just focused on just making that pass i like to see layers where the guy goes back and you know he adds good good retrieval detail maybe one time he cuts the net uh, to the to get to the middle of the ice and then he makes a pass and maybe he fakes a pass to the center and then he makes a pass where he's like looking at the center and then while he's looking here he passes there like that's adding layers to to uh, to uh, the skill of the practice the other one that i love is when you're adding a, you tr do it differently a little differently each time and i think that that's really important so you know it's a one-on-one -on -one drill first time you know, you skate forwards and defend them skate forwards. You try to kill the play right away. Next time, you make it look like you're going to skate forwards, and then you fall back on the dot line, recover your position. Next one, you look like you're in a bad position, so you purposely put yourself in a bad position, and now you focus on recovery. Next one, you fall back into a, into a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you fall back into a, a uh, rush defense where you have to absorb and then now you try to time the blue line so that you can make, make them have to make a play at the blue line. So, again, it's like four or five reps, and you do it four or five different ways, working on different things with being and being intentional. So I think that that's really important. Um, the next thing that I also think that's, that's really important is simulating game situations. Um, so I like to have an element sometimes in practice where – the game situation isn't all that obvious. And then I would say to the player, like, where, what, what kinds of, what kind of plays could you make here? Like, what kind of situation is it? And it's often something where it could be used in any area of the ice. So, like, a puck protection drill, 
uh, that I might have. I might say, okay, it's puck protection, but let's like, let's like, see if we could think about it like an offensive zone. And now you're looking at like puck protection, but like you're looking to like look at the dot because that next play is probably going to be like a pop to the dot. So let's simulate that game situation. Or you're, uh, it's just a one on one keep away, but I tell the defenseman, hey. You, you the dot that's there or use the center dot or the closest dot that's to you that's your net or the net itself where if they're in the zone that's the net make sure your back is to the net the whole time don't give up defensive side keep on the defensive side so you're going to defend this but don't give up defensive side so like stupid little things like that to create like some intentionality in the player can go a long way to really improving your practice habits and then next practice you start asking these questions about how they can incorporate more game situations or better practice habits um, in in how that how they're doing it the other one is um, create uh, talking in between reps we're going to talk about this one in the next uh, in the next podcast so I don't want to go too deep on this one but talking to players like the player you just went with with or the player you just went against and talk about the rep of hey i like this or i didn't how did how was this or you know where did where did you think the space was or i thought the space was here like just any type of interaction um even just having a good battle and you know congratulating the player on a great battle or they won then congratulate them like hey that was a great battle that was awesome that you won that i can you know and then arrange in the line to try to go against them again i also one of the things I love is one of great practice habits is to arrange in line to go against the players that you want to go against for whatever reason. Sometimes you want to go just go against their fastest player all the time because you want to work on your foot speed. That, that's an area that you know you need to get work on. But go against the kid that's like really light on their feet, really fast. And it, that's not about winning the rep. It's about learning to like you got to pick up and put your feet down try to stay closer you know really like learn be intentional about your learning so put yourself continually in situations with those types of players hey you know you're a smaller player you know you're gonna have to handle bigger players arrange yourself to go against the bigger players on the team you know like whatever the thing is you're working on something you know you've been working on your one-on-one stick handling skill Okay, well then go against defensemen who have good sticks so that you can really test it against them. You know, so you arrange in the line. You know you're only going to go five or six times in the in the in the the duration of the drill. Make sure try to go against the players that you want to go against and it's simple. You just see where the player is in line, look at the line and tell the guy that was going you say, "Hey, you go ahead of me." And they go and then that gives you access to go against that player again and again and again and so it's a good use it's a good practice habit and it can be a really good use of your practice um and then each you know don't do it where you're going against the same kid for the whole year you can mix it up for different purposes based on what it is that you're working on at that time i think that all those are are excellent excellent ideas the last thing that I, i'll say is that one of the better things that I've really stumbled across over the last few years has been creating disadvantages for yourself. Put yourself in disadvantages and force yourself to work your way out of those disadvantages. Find a way in the drill, find a way in the game to put yourself at a disadvantage and then find your way to find your way out of that disadvantage. And sometimes that's a better use of it than just winning each rep because it's set up that way. A lot of drills, frankly, are poorly d- designed. And so in it, it's set up to have one player consist one part of the players win the rep most often. And so you can put yourself at some disadvantages and have to make up that advantage. That's a great way to put, again, find a way to put a little pressure on yourself to have to execute at a high level and, uh, and, and, and put the pressure squarely on your own shoulders to try to make that happen. Those are excellent practice habits. So like I said, to me, this is something that any player, any player can just take a look and listen to this, 
make a list of the ones that, that I talked about and then just gradually add them into your overall practice habits, that's a great way to utilize, better utilize your time and your preparation so that you can become much more effective in the way in which you utilize practice. And frankly, better the practice player that you are and the way in which your ha- habits are, you actually become an invaluable teammate by becoming a great, having great practice habits.